There are there are too many members for the for the BIF to pass, uh, too many no votes for the BIF to pass today. However, we are committed to staying here until we get this Build Back Better Act done, get the legislative text. We enthusiastically endorse the framework that the president laid out today for the Build Back Better Act. And look, this was hard too because there are things that aren't in there that people people. You know, their hearts are breaking, our hearts are breaking. All the women here, all the families, paid leave is not, is not in the framework that the President laid out. And it's breaking our hearts, and we hope maybe something changes. But at least with the framework that is there, we can endorse that in principle. We can, um, but we, we do need to have the legislative text, and we will vote both bills through together. Um, we are also absolutely committed to staying through the weekend, um, staying here until we get the full text of the Build Back Better Act written. We understand that it's 90% written. That 10% should just hopefully be very quick to put together based on the framework that the President gave us. And we intend to vote for both bills when the Build Back Better Act is ready. We're going to trust the President on the Senate vote. And we're going to trust our Senate colleagues, all of them, all 50 of them, on the Senate vote. But we do need the text and we do need the vote on both bills in the House at the same time. And just Congressman, where are you right now if the vote were to held today? If a, a vote on the BIF is held today, mm -hmm. I'm a no. That has not changed. Um, we, I have held held steady um, with what we've talked about as progressives, um, at least some of the progressive caucus up until now, saying that we need both uh, bills to ride together, and uh, we don't have that right now. Also, I felt a little bamboozled because this was not, this was not what I thought was coming today. Um, and one thing that I said, and um, the speaker knows how I feel at this point, um, I said that I, I remember thinking years ago, when I made just pennies, I was, I was working low wage, and I was making just pennies over the line of where I could have received childcare uh, assistance. Just pennies. I was making less than $8 an hour. And instead of paying maybe, you know, $10 or something in, uh, of, a week for my children to go to childcare, go to daycare, I had to pay 160 It was $80 per child. I couldn't afford that, but it was just because I made pennies over the mark. I cannot sit back and allow my community to be in that same position. When we have this opportunity, it's within our grasp. Also, when I, and, I, and I keep thinking about, we are supposed to trust. Trust, our trust has to be in two senators that have not, in my opinion, been, been good faith actors up until this point. In my, because the thing is, I think about how there were people who are still within Congress right now, still in Congress, or in, or in somewhere within, um, uh, somewhere, somewhere here, who were there and made those decisions that could have changed my life and could have changed the lives of so many. You know, when I was sleeping in my car, those are policy decisions that could have been different. And so who was speaking for me then? And I cannot be what I didn't want to see. I wanted to see somebody stand up. I wanted to see somebody speak for me, you know, and the fact that I had no voice then, but now I have a voice. They messed up and let me get in Congress. So now I have a voice.